Google Earth is a free software program that allows the user to fly over a virtual globe viewing the Earth through high-resolution satellite images. The program also features many data layers as information sources, including points of interest, roads, bus stops, and 3D buildings. Google Earth also enables the user to create annotated maps and to import personal spatial data. This presentation illustrates how to make accurate distance, area, perimeter, and height measurements in Google Earth. This image displays the main window of Google Earth with some labeled features and panels. The 3D viewer is the window for viewing the globe and its terrain. It contains the status bar on the bottom which displays point coordinates, elevations, and the viewpoint altitude above mean sea level. In this presentation, the focus will be on the ruler button used for making measurements such as distances and areas. The toolbar above the 3D viewer contains one button the ruler that opens tools for measuring distances, areas, perimeters, and heights. Selecting the ruler icon generates the ruler pop-up box. Google Earth measurement types are categorized by line, path, polygon, circle, 3D path, and 3D polygon measurements. Each of these measurements will be described in subsequent slides. Making line measurements between two points on the ground in Google Earth yields two primary outputs length, and heading. The length can be output in a variety of metric and non-metric units, including kilometers and miles. The length is further described as map length and ground length. Map length is purely the horizontal distance between two points. Meanwhile, ground length accounts for changes in terrain when measuring the distance. The accuracy of the ground length is dependent upon the accuracy of the digital terrain model that Google Earth uses in the area of interest. The last output displayed in degrees is the heading. This is the angle from north measured in a clockwise direction between the first point selected and the second point selected. To show the effect of topography on the difference between map length and ground length, a line measurement was made in the Grand Canyon. To make sure that the topography is visible, select the terrain layer from the layers panel. One point was selected on the Grand Canyon's south rim and the other point was selected at the base of the canyon near the Colorado River. The map length, or horizontal distance, in this location was approximately 200 meters shorter than the distance as measured along the ground. The measurement can be saved by clicking the Save button in the ruler. After clicking Save, a new dialog box appears where the measurement is generating a new path. Attributes are added to the measurement including name and description. The ground length is saved under the Measurements tab. The newly saved path appears in the Places panel. The description for the new Grand Canyon path appears as a pop-up when the path is clicked on. Making line measurements between multiple points on the ground in Google Earth yields two primary outputs, length and elevation profile. The path length display unit options and measurement procedure are the same as previously shown for the line length. The user selects multiple points along a desired path. The length is a running tally of these individual line measurements. If the Show Elevation Profile box is selected, a cross-sectional view of the path is shown. This image shows the elevation profile for the Grand Canyon path that we created earlier. The elevation profile is a typical cross-section with elevation on the y-axis and distance along the x-axis. When the mouse hovers over the elevation profile, a corresponding arrow is shown along the path in the 3D viewer. For every incremental distance traveled along the path, an elevation and a percentage slope is provided both in the graph and at the arrow in the 3D viewer. Summary statistics for the entire path are provided including total ground distance, maximum minimum average elevation, elevation gained and lost along the path, as well as slope percentage statistics. In addition to using the Path tab in the Ruler tool, an alternative method for generating a path in Google Earth is the Get Directions tool. This tool was used to generate directions from the University of Florida's Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center to the University of Florida main campus in Gainesville. The directions were saved to the My Places panel as a path. This is highlighted in blue.
After right-clicking the path and selecting Show Elevation Profile, the following view was created for the 314-mile route. As one heads northward from South Florida, there is a clear trend of increasing elevation. In a couple areas, outlined in blue, there are data gaps in the digital elevation model. These gaps mean that an elevation of zero feet is used as the default. As mentioned before, the accuracy of the elevation profile is dependent upon the accuracy of the underlying digital elevation model. DEM accuracy is variable and location dependent in Google Earth. Measuring the perimeter or area of a geometric shape on the ground is accomplished through the use of the Polygon tab in Google Earth's Ruler tool. Since the perimeter is a distance function similar to line and path measurement, measurement procedures and map units are the same. The Polygon tool automatically creates a closed geometric figure from the selected points. Polygons with two vertices have a perimeter that is twice the length of the linear path between two points. The area output is a computation of the area enclosed by the geometric figure. Many commonly used aerial units are available in Google Earth, including acres, square kilometers, and square miles. There are many applications for perimeter or area measurements of a location of interest. The top image shows a pond at the University of Florida's Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. The approximately 800-foot perimeter measurement could be used to estimate the amount of silt fence needed to protect the pond from runoff during construction of adjacent agricultural buildings. The bottom image shows a polygon that was created by selecting points at the roof corners for the Hurricane House at the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. The building footprint is approximately 4,000 square feet. With this information, estimations for tarp sizes used in structural fumigation can begin. Similar to the line and path measurements, polygon measurements can be saved as well. Circle measurements within Google Earth are created by selecting a center point and then moving the mouse until the desired radius is reached. Similar to polygon measurements, radius and circumference measurements are simple length computations with the same linear unit choices available. Circle area computations are displayed with the same area unit options as those found with the Polygon Area tool. Applications for the circle measurement option within Google Earth's Ruler tool are numerous. In the top image, a water treatment facility was constructed by the town of Davie on land formerly owned by the University of Florida at the Fort Lauderdale Research and Education Center. The circle measurement tool can be used to easily measure the area and circumference of these new structures. With the simple height measurement, the volume or water holding capacity of these approximately 115 foot wide structures can be calculated. The bottom image shows the circle tool centered on a live oak tree at the Research and Education Center. In Davie, Florida, these mature trees are protected during new construction. The rule of thumb is to maintain a setback of one foot for every inch of diameter at breast height, or DBH for short. This particular tree has a DBH of 18 inches. Thus, a minimum construction setback of 18 feet should be adhered to. Circle measurements in Google Earth are not saved as polygons. Instead, circle measurements are saved as paths with tightly spaced points. This means that area and radius measurements are not preserved in the measurements tab. The path length is analogous to the circumference measurement. The remaining two measurement types in the Google Earth Ruler tool are 3D paths and 3D polygons. To make these two measurements, the 3D building layer in the layers panel must be activated. This layer is highlighted in blue. The resultant length, perimeter, and area 3D measurements have the same display unit options as their corresponding 2D measurements discussed earlier. The Century Tower on the University of Florida main campus is shown in this image. The official height of this bell tower, constructed in 1953, is 157 feet. By selecting a point on the roof of the tower in red and a point at the base of the tower in blue, a height of 155 feet is measured in Google Earth using the 3D path measurement tool. For this particular measurement, a majority of the line is within the tower's walls. 
The 3D Path tool can be used for a variety of 3D building measurements, including the building perimeter and distances from building points to the ground. In the right image, the bottom of the bell is approximately 125 feet above the ground. Similar to the Polygon tool shown earlier, the 3D Polygon tool can be used to measure the perimeter and area on the surface of 3D buildings. In this image, a 3D polygon was created around the perimeter of Ben Hill Griffin Stadium's North End Zone scoreboard on the University of Florida main campus. The tool returns an area of the sign of approximately 2,600 square feet. This presentation introduced the different measurement types supported in Google Earth, including lines, paths, polygons, and circles. In addition to conventional 2D measurement, 3D measurement tools incorporating the 3D buildings layer were investigated.